got ourselves a new HDR standard, fellas. Visa just created an HDR standard called Display HDR. Let's talk about it. So who is Visa anyway? Ever heard of the DisplayPort? Yeah, a couple of my monitors are hooked up using DisplayPort. Well, there you go. Yeah, Visa was the designer of DisplayPort. Came out in like 2006. Alright, good to know. Now I think this is really cool. They have an automated test tool that you can download and perform your own test yourself to validate and verify the monitor or TV performs the way they said it would. That is so cool because you no longer have to rely on the manufacturer to tell you how it's going to perform. You can test it yourself. How awesome is that? Visa is claiming they're going to be fully transparent in their testing methodology. They have a robust set of test metrics for HDR and they're going to clearly articulate the performance level of each device. This is extremely important. In fact, Vizio even brought this up themselves complaining about the UHD Alliance not having a standard for HDR testing. Now that Visa has come out with a fully transparent thorough testing methodology, I think you're going to see most of the manufacturers flock to this and it gives everyone a fair chance and it levels the playing field. This one's for you, Vizio. I'm hoping this completely eliminates these proprietary HDR brand names that these manufacturers have been using. I'm looking at you, Samsung. So why is Visa doing this in the first place? Well, I speculated to get them testing and certification fees and that's fine, they gotta make money, but the benefit for us is you'll be able to look at a box and if you see one of them three badges on it, you'll know if it's good or not. And that's something that we don't have today. Alright, so which companies are actually going to do this? Looks like they've got about 20 members so far. Here's the list. Of the manufacturers in this list, the companies that I'm most excited to see in this list are AMD, Asus, Dell, HP, Intel, Lenovo, LG, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Samsung. Looks like a few companies are missing from this list. Yeah, there's a couple missing. So what are the performance badges that we can expect to see on monitors in the future? Sure, the entry level is Display HDR 400. TV or monitor must be 8-bit. It must have global dimming. It must have a peak luminance of at least 400 CDM squared. And it must meet the minimum requirements for color gamma and contrast to exceed SDR. Okay, makes sense. Display HDR 600 is targeting professional and enthusiast level laptops and high performance monitors. The spec calls for true high contrast HDR with notable specular highlights, peak luminance level of 600 CDM squared or 600 nits. That's double the luminosity of a typical display. There is a full screen flash requirement for rendering realistic effects in gaming and movies and the way I interpret that is there's probably a hundred percent white screen measurement that it must hit in order to qualify for display HDR 600. So think explosions, lightning flashes, car headlights when they shine right into the camera in a game or in a movie. I'm assuming that's what this is referring to. There's a requirement for real-time contrast ratios with local dimming it must yield impressive highlights and deep blacks. There's another requirement for a visible increase in color gamut compared to the already improved Display HDR 400. And the last requirement is it requires at least 10-bit image processing. I haven't seen too many PC displays that can hit 600 nits. Display HDR 1000 is targeting professional, enthusiast, and content creator PC monitors. They're saying it must have outstanding local dimming, high contrast HDR, and advanced specular highlights. The first and the main requirement is it must have a peak luminance of 1000 CDM squared, or 1000 nits. That's more than three times of a typical display. This also has a full screen flash requirement like Display HDR 600, where I assume they're flashing a white image or uh, a full 100% white screen for a few seconds to see if it can hit at least 1000 nits. And that again is for explosions, lightning, car headlights, flashing it on the screen during a game or a movie. Now this one's important. Unprecedented, long duration, high performance ideal for content creation. What I think that means is it must be sustainable for long periods of time. The next requirement is it must have local dimming that yields two times the contrast increase over display HDR 600. The next requirement, it must significantly have a visible increase in color gamut compared to display HDR 400. And last but not least, it must also require 10-bit image processing. I don't think I've ever seen a 1000-bit PC display. 
Alright man, I'm a little bit confused. Is this for PC displays or for TVs? I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to reach out to them and confirm that. So what's the specific testing criteria for these displays? Okay, so there are three categories of performance criteria. You have white luminance performance, black level performance, and bit depth of display performance. And there are four tiers of performance categories for each display HDR level. Average SDR level, you have the display HDR 400, you have display HDR HDR 600 and then you have display HDR 1000 as we just covered. Okay, thanks for reading that to me. Could have read it myself. Alright, so which products are display HDR certified so far? Um, none. They just announced the program, so they're probably gonna need a little time to get certified. Alright, I think we're done here. Now what? I'll let you know when devices start becoming certified. How are you gonna let me know? Easy! Subscribe and hit the bell icon and you'll get the notification when I post a new video. Nice! Alright y'all, well, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video. I'm Joey, thanks for watching. Alright, that's it. I'm out of here. I'll see you in the comments. <laughs>